Well, blessings, everybody. This is Apostle Dr. Craig Ponders, Sr., Chancellor of Kingdom Development Institute. I'm so excited to be coming to you today live on Facebook. Please like our page, share, tell your friends, tell your family. Let me give you two websites before we get started www.kdionline.org. That's kdionline.org. That stands for Kingdom Development Institute.org. And also, I want to give you Financial Wealth Institute.org. I'm so excited to be sharing with you fresh bread from heaven manna today. Now, the difference with this manna versus the Old Testament manna, you can carry this manna into tomorrow. You know, there was a time when God gave you fresh revelation or fresh manna back in uh, the, the, the Old Testament. If you didn't eat that manna that day, it would rot the next day because people would get fat. I'm here to tell you, people of God, God loves you. God has so much for you. But let me just, just dive right into my subject matter. I'm going to talk with you today about the complications of the kingdom of God. I'm going to let that marinate for just a second. Say complications. Now, before we move on, we're going to talk about the complications of the kingdom of God. I didn't say that the kingdom of God was complicated, but there are complications regarding the kingdom of God. Let's take a look at what the word complicated means. Circumstance that complicates something. A difficulty, a problem, an obstacle, a hurdle, a stumbling block, a drawback, a snag, a catch, a hitch, or headache. A secondary disease or condition that develops in the course of a primary disease or condition and arises either as a result of it or from independent causes. Now let me explain something to you. The kingdom of God is not what you want it to be, nor is it what you think it is. John 18, 36, Christ boldly says that his kingdom is not of this world. The kingdom of God cannot be defined with mixtures. So we're going to talk about today the complications of the kingdom of God. Call your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers, your church members, because I'm going to give you the three must-haves in order to operate effectively and efficiently in the kingdom of God. Now, let me boldly start off by saying this. I can always tell, and you should always be able to tell, when someone does not have a revelation of or on or in the kingdom of God, three words, how you'll know when they don't have a revelation on the kingdom of God. They'll say, establishing God's kingdom. They'll say, building God's kingdom. And then they'll say, God's kingdom needs to be funded. No, pastor, you need money for your church or ministry. <laughs> because the kingdom of God doesn't need to be financed. Don't need to be funded. It doesn't need to be established. It doesn't need to be built. You know why? The kingdom of God was created outside the realm of time in a place called eternity. It supersedes money, it supersedes culture, it supersedes church and religion, and even Christianity. Uh-oh, I forgot to tell you that the kingdom of God is not even a Christian kingdom. It ain't even a Jewish kingdom. Now, I didn't say that the kingdom of God don't have money, because the kingdom of God has its own economy. Let me give you a quick revelation. When baby Jesus, baby Jesus showed up, did, did, did his parents ever ask for an offering? Look in the Bible. Search out the Bible. Is there one scripture where Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the high priest after the order of Melchizedek, the apostle, the prophet, he wasn't just a savior. He's the king of kings, and he's also the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. My point is, find one scripture where Jesus ever asked for money. He had his own economy, people of God. Why do you think he had his own CPA treasurer following him around? What was Judas the steward or CPA or, or accountant of? What happened to all that money they laid at his feet when he was a baby? Ha ha! He had his own treasury. I'm here to tell you, people of God, 
that when you come into the kingdom of God, not just get born again, but when you enter in the kingdom by way of revelation, you and your family inherit a treasury. In it is healing, deliverance, peace, joy, money, everything that you need. Okay, David, they sing songs about David that killed his thousands and ten thousands and saw this and saw that. Yeah, David had never done any of that. But notice, people of God, that when he was a little boy, God was preparing him for kingdom purposes with the bear and the lion. And when the day came when David showed up to bring his brother's lunch, you'll notice that he is the only one equipped in that dispensation that had the kingdom that was able to defeat the greatest enemy of God. Not of the armies of God, not of the Israelites, but of his God. He literally represented the kingdom of God. And I'm here to tell you, since the beginning of mankind, God has always had his kingdom representative on the earth. Now, this is going to be hard to grip because it's hard for me to grip. But David wasn't born again, didn't have no Holy Ghost, but he had the kingdom. Abraham wasn't saved, wasn't born again, but he had the kingdom. Okay. See, it's hard. See, the kingdom of God cannot be defined by our own religious beliefs and mindset. Today we're talking about, let me, let me read you. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit out of my book, Cracking the Apostolic and Prophetic Code. I encourage you to get a copy of it. You can go to any of our websites and get a copy of this great book. But when I autograph my book, go to Matthew chapter 21, verse 30, 43. Matthew 21, 43. I love this scripture. This scripture says in Matthew 21, 43, I remember when I found it, blew my mind. It says, therefore I say unto you that the kingdom of God shall be taken from you, you religious leaders, you senior leaders, you church leaders, you old generation leaders. It shall be taken from you and shall be given to a nation that can bring forth the fruit. Do you know that that word nation there means a new group of people, a new generation? There's a scripture in the Bible that says, uh, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, those of you senior leaders, because that's who you are today, that block others from entering into the kingdom. It says, you yourselves shall not enter. So we're talking about the complications of the kingdom. Let me move on. My point was, there are three words that people use out of ignorance who don't have a revelation on the kingdom. They talk about the kingdom needs to be established. No, it don't. It's already here. See, let me say this here. Let me get this to you. We talk about this in our one-year one year program on the kingdom of God. I'm going to give this to you for free. But there are four established kingdoms on planet Earth. There is the animal kingdom. There's the kingdom of man. There's the kingdom of Satan. And then there's the kingdom of God. How is it? Do, do, are the birds here? Are the zebras here? Yes. Are the squirrels here? How is it that that kingdom is here in its fullness, but God's kingdom isn't? Because you're trying to define it or describe it in your own intelligence. If the kingdom of God comes from out of eternity, always was, always will be, no more, no less. Now, the, I remember I heard Bishop McKinney say this one time. He and I lectured together, and he said, Dr. Ponder, the kingdom of God is here, but it's coming. Woo-hoo! That's it. Because it's always coming to the next generation. Right? It's here in its fullness, baby. It's like if a woman gets pregnant, is she going to get pregnant? Or is the baby the once, the, the moment mama gets, gets that sperm in her womb and she gets pregnant, the baby's there, but he's manifesting into full term to become a, an adult so that he can, birth can come forth. The kingdom of God is within you. Behold, it's within you. Right? The Bible says it gives my father good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So, so how or why could God give you something that's not here? Let, let, you got me excited now. Let me say this here. Go to Psalm, go to, go to Acts chapter 1, verse 3. Mm-hmm. Let, me, let me say this. How is it possible for God to talk about something that's not here? See? That's real simple. Remember when Jesus died on the cross, went into hell, and then was resurrected? Mm-hmm. Let's look at Acts chapter 1, verse 3. The Bible says that to whom, let's go to verse 1 so you can believe this. The former treaties have I made, O Philippians, 
of all that Jesus began to both do and teach after he was resurrected. Watch this. Until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Look at verse 3. To whom he had shown himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them for 40 days. So for the last 40 days of his resurrected life in the spirit realm, he was resurrected. He had all power, all authority. And for the last 40 days that he was going to speak to him, verse 3 says, being seen of them for 40 days, the only thing that Jesus spoke to them about was pertaining those things of the kingdom of God. Yeah. How is it possible that Jesus Christ would spend 40 days talking about something that wasn't there? Mm -hmm. That's how you know when you got a kingdom, when you got a revelation on the kingdom of God, you have a revelation. Now watch this. It was established outside the realm of time. It supersedes culture. Also, we have to realize, people of God, that those don't have a revelation of the kingdom will have their focus in three areas that are off and wrong. I'm talking about the complications of the kingdom. In my book, Cracking the Apostolic and Prophetic Code, I talk about the three gates of hell. Mm -hmm. The three gates of heaven is the church, the marketplace, and the workplace. See, there's whole movements out there like the Seven Mountains that says everything's workplace. See, it's a lie. I am an entrepreneur, and I've been an entrepreneur for over 40 years since I was 12 years old. I'm 52, so I've been an entrepreneur, what is it, 42 years? I've never had to work for anybody. So the marketplace represents those of you that have your own businesses who are entrepreneurial, who carry your own government. Mm -hmm. The workplace is simply a place where you work. We have employees. They work for me. They don't, they're not making all the, they don't have government here. I have the government. My wife and I, my family carry the government. So there are entire movements that are off in their doctrine and their anti-kingdom. You know why people don't want you to have access to the kingdom? They want to control you. So we're talking about what are the enemies of the kingdom of God. Here is when you know that somebody does not have a revelation on the kingdom when they are bound by these three enemies. Here are the three enemies of the kingdom of God. Write them down. Number one is religion. Number two is tradition. And then number three is racism. See, the kingdom of God has its own culture. And I'm going to share a personal story with you here in just a few moments. But you, you have to realize people that do not have a full understanding of the kingdom of God will be off or overbearing or too much when it comes to religion. Religion says we don't do that. Tradition says, well, we don't do it that way. And then racism is, it's a colorless demon. See, race, real racism ain't about color. It's about control. But let's just keep racism in its purest form between black and white because I'm going somewhere. Now, currently, there is a nationwide movement called Black Lives Matter. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something for a minute, and I'm going to cuss. What the hell is wrong with all these black people? You know what the problem is? It ain't white folks, cops killing black people. It's black people who, who won't discipline their kids. It's black people who are, live by excuses. It's black people who let their own culture remain. I watch all these videos and all these shows, and the, the cop will tell the black person, put your hands up. Black, black person refuses to pull over. They're, they're, they're disrespectful and defiant. Now, it, when I get pulled over by the police, I pull over. I roll my window down, keep my hands on my steering wheel, and when he says, sir, may I have your license and registration, I ask him, Officer, why did you pull me over? I have a right to ask a question, and I'm respectful. He's not snatching me out of my Mercedes and clubbing me on that. You know why? Because I have enough respect that my mama taught me to be respectful to the law. Now, I'm talking to you. I don't want to go too far over in Black Lives Matter, because let me explain something to you. When you've got a revelation on the kingdom of God, our focus shouldn't be on any particular culture or color. 
Now, I'm going to say this here, and this is going to mess you up. But when you come into the kingdom of God, you are to abandon, forsake, and I'm using those big words to mess you up, every culture and come under his culture. I think the scripture says that in Christ, there's neither male nor female, bond or free, Greek or Jew, we're all one. Right? So our focus should... Now, I'm not saying I, I've, I've, I've neglected my inheritance as a black man. I didn't say that. My fo We're talking about focus. So let's move on here. First of all, if you understand the kingdom, when you were seeking it first, your focus would not be on the culture of what you came out of. But it would be on Christ, the King of Kings, and His kingdom. That sounds easy, but what does all that mean? There's a Christ. Most Christians, some of you know Christ the Savior. Maybe you might know Christ the King of Kings, but hardly any Christians know Christ the High Priest after the order of Melchizedek because they don't understand his culture. When Abraham came into the presence of Melchizedek, he had enough sense to know what to do. Right? We have to understand, people of God, that when the widow woman came into the presence of Christ, the king, the, the, the apostle, she touched his hem. When blind Bartimaeus, because see, he wasn't their savior, because he had not yet ascended and descended. So they had to approach him in another mantle. So when blind Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth passing by he had enough sense to take off his beggar's mantle, his robe that identified him as nothing, nobody, cast it to the side and jumped up, risked death, and began to holler out, Jesus, thou son of David. He touched the throne of David and said, have mercy on me. The Bible says that Jesus stopped and said, call him. He had a revelation on the kingdom. Remember the woman... That, that said, Lord, even the dog have the right to eat the crumb from the master. Mm -hmm. He didn't come to save her. He said, woman, what have I to do with thee? I have not come to save thee. She didn't have time for him to die, resurrect, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, 20 years later, for the people to get the revelation. that She, she said, Lord, my daughter needs deliverance now. I yeah. touch you. The, the son of David. Oh, that was the kingdom. It wasn't religion and culture. She got out of her culture by... And she got into the manifestation. I'm going to talk about this. And he had to give her what she asked for. See, when you get in the kingdom, he said, if you will seek first. Now, pastors, don't shut me down. He didn't say tithe. He didn't say give offering. He didn't say come to church. He didn't say fast. I believe in all of that. But that's not what Jesus said to do first and primary. He said, the first thing you need to do, seek first the kingdom of God. Not Black Lives Matter. Notice nothing's changed. See, if you teach your family and pastors, if you teach your people how to access the kingdom of God, guess what? We will change an economy. We will change a dysfunctional generation. We will change broken communities and broken families. You see, my wife was a single mom when I met her. She came from a bad environment. I came from a good environment, but I was worse than her. God took two dysfunctional people brought us together, put us in the kingdom, and then caused us to be where we're at today. We, 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 have, we have defied every law, every, every, every statistic, because I'm not a black man no more, and I'm going to talk to you about that. The only way to understand and enter the kingdom of God, are you ready? Are you ready? There's mm -hmm. only one way to enter in to the kingdom of God. There's only one way to obtain the kingdom of God. Are you ready? It's by revelation. <laughs> it's by revelation. Revealed knowledge. Know-how. That's it. That's it. When you come into the kingdom of God. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3, verses 3 through 7. I'm not going to read all of that, but I'm going to give you something. When I was... Studying this morning, God got, gave this to me. I had never seen this before. But watch this. Ephesians chapter 3. Watch this. Verse 3 through 7. This is Apostle Paul. Here's what I find interesting. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
There were 12 apostles. One was a devil or full of a devil. But God gave Apostle Paul, wrote three quarters of this Bible. He wrote twice as much as everybody else. One man, the 13th apostle. He didn't walk with Jesus. He didn't walk with the 12. But God entrusted him with more revelation than any of the apostles, prophets, elders combined together. That's how you know he, when you're in the kingdom, God gives you your revelation. Watch this. I'm getting ahead of myself, but watch this. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 3. Watch this. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. Now he's talking about himself. Verse 2. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, right, which is given to you, look at verse 3. That's what I'm trying to get to. By that, by revelation, he made known to me the mysteries. Apostle Paul said, he made known the mysteries to me. Verse 4. Whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Verse 5. Which in other ages, these mysteries were not made known to the sons of men. Oh, Lord. Watch this, baby. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets. See, you know that when you, I remember years ago, it was 1980, I'm sorry, it was 1995. Um, That's how you know when you're getting older, older, and you start naming off years. Marilyn Hickey came to our church. Marilyn Hickey got on the platform. She was a real small lady. She came to the platform in Reno Valley. And I heard Marilyn Hickey say this. You always know when you get into the presence of a real apostle. She said the revelatory realm of revelation opened, mysteries open up. I'm in the house of an apostle. I'm like, who would have known that Marilyn Hickey knew about apostles? Because God revealed it her by way of revelation. You always know when you're in the presence of a holy apostle or prophet because the revelatory realm and mysteries open up. When you're sitting there, God should be downloading mysteries, revelation while he's preaching, teaching. She's teaching, preaching. Okay? People of God, I'm here to tell you, uh, go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 17. I'm going to break you off a little something, something. Watch this. Matthew 13, 17 says that this is regarding the, the revelation or the mysteries of the kingdom of God. It says, know that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things, those mysteries, those revelations, those are the things that he's talking about, which you see and have not seen them and have and hear those things which you hear manifest and walk in and have not heard them. The Bible says that many righteous men and prophets have desired to see and hear mysteries and get revelations from God and have never seen them. You know why? For time's sake, I can't go there, but in Ephesians, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 that God only gave this unique ability to some apostles, some prophets. I'm just putting emphasis on the three, two out of the fivefold offices. But I'm here to tell you, you know when you're around the holy apostles that God has assigned to you and for your life? Because only some have that unique ability to impart to you the revelation, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. If you've been around your apostle for 50 years and you don't know nothing, you're... They either, aren't, they either aren't holy or they're not the ones that God has, has assigned uniquely to you to impart this gift to you. Okay? Real quick, before I move on, let's talk about, let's look at the word mysteries. Let's look at some scriptures real quick. I love Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 9 and 29. It says, the secret things belong to the Lord. But oh my God, those things which he reveals to us they belong to us. When God reveals something to you, do you know what split the Catholic Church wide open and why they Martin Luther tore up the Catholic Church? He said, okay, this is it. There's no mediator between God and man. You now, it's called the priesthood of all believers. 
it affected their monetary system because in order to hear from God, you had to take an offering. You had to do something, take it to the church, and the pastor, the priest would tell you what God said. Let me tell you something. God gave you the Holy Ghost. God gave you common sense. God gave you insight. God gave you wisdom. But my God, there's something called revelation. And I'm here to tell you, people of God, uh, I love Colossians verse 4. I'm uh, sorry, Colossians 1, 25 and 26. It says, I am made a minister of this dispensation, the mystery of which hath been hid from ages. I love Luke 8, 17. It says, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be made known and come abroad. I love Ephesians 3 and 5. It says, which in other ages, previous generations, was not made unto the sons of men, and is now being revealed to the holy apostles and prophets of God. Okay? Let me give you my background. When I got saved December the 6th, 1987, I was a mess. My cousin... Uh, KP is on here right now. God bless you, man of God. I love you. My cousin, Kelvin Palmer, was with me in some of my criminal days. Now, we both saved and delivered today. He's a retired military police and went on to do great things secular before he came into the kingdom of God. But he watched me be dysfunctional. He was with me. We did some, some, some things that we shouldn't, be, shouldn't have done. My point is, when I came into the kingdom of God, I was a mess. I didn't have no church background, but I knew how to Lie, cheat, steal, manipulate, run the streets, and do wrong. And But you know what? God honored all that. My point is, I had no revelation on the kingdom. I had an insight on doing wrong. But when I came into the kingdom and God gave me revelation, I was able to start acting like a God man. Just like that. Without no delay. So, so here's my point. The first thing that God did in the first year that I was saved is God gave me this revelation. I, when I came into the kingdom, I had no education. I had no degrees. I had no money. I, I had no formal training. I'm trying to explain something. The way I look now, I look like that somewhere in the back of my mind, but it wasn't, this, this wasn't how I was. My point is, within the first year that I got saved, the first year I got saved, I made $16,000 pushing a lawnmower. That's it. God gave me a revelation the first year that I was saved, and this is what he told me. God came to me. And he spoke to me, and he said, Craig, he said, son, this is for you, people of God. He said, son, you no longer have to think like a black man. It messed me up. That, that messed me up so bad that I had to get in my vehicle, drive to a faraway mountain. I mean, I did stupid stuff. I mean, I, I couldn't understand what he was saying in the street driving down the street, so I drove to the top of a mountain, got out of my truck, and I walked around, said, God, what are you saying? He said, Craig, you no longer have to think like a black man. I said, God, I don't really understand what you're trying to tell me. What are you trying to say? He, he kept repeating it over and over, and then God got so mad at me, he yelled at me and said, be me. I said, okay, God, I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. Are you trying to say if you were here? You would walk like me, talk like me, dance like me, do like He said, be me. And all of a sudden, the culture of the kingdom came in. And a few weeks later, I saw a guy that I hadn't seen in years. And I said, hey, Richard, how you doing? And this brother looked at me crazy. Richard was a little off. And he looked at me. He said, hey, man, I don't, back off. Don't walk up on me. I don't know you. He said, you sound like a guy I used to know named Craig, but you don't walk like him. When I came into the kingdom, everything about me began to change. My walk, my talk. In other words, I wasn't I wouldn't walking like a black man from the streets no more. I started walking with the confidence of heaven. And everything about my character and my culture, see, I, I couldn't be defined as black no more. Now, it took some work, but here's my point. When I came into the kingdom of God, the first thing that God gave me was his DNA. Mm -hmm. Be me. And so my mind hadn't heard stuff like that. So I had to move my mind to the side and say, okay, God, what do you, when God imparted that revelation to me, that second year, I made $86,000 pushing that same lawnmower from 16 to 86. That third year, I made $116,000 in a recession. In other words, when I came into the kingdom, when God gave me the revelation that I was a God man, I stopped talking like a black man. I stopped acting like a black man. I stopped doing what black people did. So black lives didn't matter. 
godliness and holiness and virtue. In other words, I started pursuing the kingdom because he said to seek it. So I started talking, reading my scripture. So when I read the Bible, I didn't read the Bible like I came up in a black traditional church. I started reading the Bible as if heaven was already here. And I started talking the way heaven talks. I started acting the way heaven talks. And guess what? Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go. Watch this. Here we go. Let me just give it to you. Here are the three must-haves in order to be in the kingdom of God. You must have revelation. Number two, you got to have, and I know I'm speaking Ebonics. That's the blackness in me, but it makes my point sound good. You got to have manifestation. You hear me? Mm-hmm. How I knew that God came and spoke to me was it began to manifest in every area of my life. Not just spiritually. The Bible says supernatural, first natural, then spiritual. So in my bank account, in my life, in my anointing, in my walk, in my prayer, manifestation, manifestation started. So what's the word manifestation mean? It's an event, an action, or an object that clearly shows or embodies something, especially a theory or a point or a project. The action or fact of showing an idea, display, demonstration, exhibition, presentation, sign, indication, evidence, testimony, proof, substantiation, example. In other words, I just wasn't a black man pushing a lawnmower. And people would laugh. I remember I was at the car wash, and I'm going to call his name out. See, I'll bust you out like that. This is one of my old childhood friends named Lawrence. Now, I ain't going to call his last name because you'll find him on Facebook. But those of you that grew up in Riverside, you might know who I'm talking about. I remember I'd heard he was doing big things, and he was driving a BMW. Now, at this time, I didn't have my Mercedes, my classic cars. I, I was driving an old work truck. And I remember I, I was at the car wash getting my Cadillac washed. And he said, hey, I heard you got a little landscaping company. I said, yeah, that little landscaping at that time, it made me $300,000. I said, yeah, that little landscaping money uh, made me over $300,000 last year. Uh, how much did that big-time electrical business make you? And he, and, and he, and he, he I got to go. See, in other words, he was putting me down because his car was, see, here's the thing. I was manifesting the kingdom of God. I wasn't trying to compete with nobody. I was establishing legacy, inheritance, and the rights in the kingdom. He said, if I seek first the kingdom of God, everything. See, these are, I'm talking about complications. See, all these things will come to distract you, disturb you, disappoint you. But when you've got a revelation on the kingdom of God, the first thing God will do is he will manifest the blessings of God in your home, in your marriage, for your family, for your children. Do you hear me? We gave our, 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 our son, our oldest son, our grandkids a check to go buy some clothes. We were at a basketball game, and, and, the, and the baby told my wife and I the other day, we got new clothes, Grandpa. I said, awesome. You know why? We manifest the blessings of God for our family. Let's move on. Number three, so, so here are the three must-haves. So I can get ready to close here. you got to have revelation. You must have revelation. God's got to give it to you. Because, see, if he gives it to you, can't nobody talk you out of it. Can't nobody convince you that it ain't working. Because, number two, you must have manifestation. So when we ended up with this landscaping company, we had six work trucks. We had nine employees. <laughs> nobody couldn't say we didn't have a And we had made over a million dollars in six years pushing a lot more. That wasn't too bad for an ex-everything that didn't have nothing. And all I started out with, people of God, was a revelation from God that I didn't have to think like a black man no more. <laughs> no limitations. Mm-hmm. That gave manifestation. And number three, you got to have communication. So right now I'm communicating, but I'm imparting to you the kingdom of God. So when you've got a revelation of the kingdom of God, you then are able to manifest the results of the kingdom. See, when Jesus showed up, they said, but whose authority do that? He never answered. He just manifested the kingdom. He just, he just healed. Boom, boom, boom. He, manifestation. They were scratching their head. My God. I mean, you cast out demons by, Be- by Beelzebub. Come on now. See, they were trying to limit him. Mm-hmm. But the manifestations got the attention of everybody around him. And then number three, you must have communication. See, I'm effectively communicating the kingdom of God. I'm imparting it into you. And many of you are going to grab hold of this and you're going to run and begin to get revelation from God. God's going to download it to you. Now let me end with this here. Okay? I'm done. 
I'm going to stop there. I love you. We believe in you. Be on the lookout for some, some awesome and amazing things that are coming up here in the near future. I'm here to tell you, people of God, you've got a little bit of time left for the end of the year. I want you to get revelation. Say, God, lift up your hands. Father God, I impart to these viewers yes, the insight that comes from you, Father, yes, by way of revelation to the yes, Holy yes, Ghost. Father. I impart revelation to the people of God. Yes, God. God bless you. Revelation, manifestation, and communication. God bless you. We love you. Remember, this is Apostle Dr. Craig Ponder. God bless you.